Sean, you've covered Nebraska for years. I've covered recruiting for years. And I don't know, is it safe to say that this might be the biggest Nebraska recruiting weekend in the last 25 years? If it's not the biggest, it's right up there for sure. I mean, just the sure number of guys in terms of the four stars. I mean, we're, we're around 16 four stars. It can change that we've confirmed just for the class of 2024. But the number one ranked position guys, the number one guys in their state, over 25 plus guys with offers on campus. I mean, that's almost unheard of, especially at a place like Nebraska. So, yeah, the, the weekend itself highlighted by Dylan Riola's um, visit to Lincoln again um, kind of highlights things. Yeah, all the excitement kind of coming together. Matt Rule's first spring practice opened up on Monday, and then this weekend, the number ones come to town. Who are the number ones? Number one QB, Dylan Riola. Number one defensive lineman, Williams Winery. Number one offensive tackle in America, Brandon Baker. Whew, some firepower on campus. Sean, what, what, what's the expectation here? Are, there, are we looking at possible commitments coming out of this weekend, or is it more to set the tone for the spring heading into summer? I think there's a few guys maybe that have been make, that will make return trips. You could get a commit, but honestly, I still think the expectation is how many of these big-time guys can you convince to come back again? Mm -hmm. Will they come back spring game? Will they come back for maybe a June official visit? Uh, because when you get to the high, high-level guys that are coming right now, they're not coming on this trip to make a decision more likely than not. They're here to evaluate, look at it. Can this trip get any of those guys to want to come back? I think that's really where you have to start and look at this thing. All right, let's get into it. We're going to talk Dylan Raiola. I'm, I'm, I've been all over the map with where I think he's going because Chad Simmons comes on here and we talk about his visits to Georgia and to, o or to USC, but I'm kind of leaning towards Nebraska here, Sean. I know it's early. Well, it's not actually early. It's kind of late for quarterback. So what does Nebraska need to do to close on Dylan Raiola? Make him feel comfortable. I mean, they've, he is going to take as much work as any recruit in the country uh, because of the teams involved, USC and Georgia, even Oregon, Nebraska, um, they're all fighting for him right now, and it, it feels like it goes back and forth. He is scheduled to return to Lincoln again for the spring game on April 22nd. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like since the dead period really ended, you know, he's going to be coming here like once a month. And you know, Matt Rule, when when things open back up in January, uh, they maximized. Uh, three visits to Riola uh, to his school with Rule going out there once himself uh, by Rule. So they're doing all they can. Can they show him enough? Can you know? And then I think the other guys that are in town this weekend can they create an environment where these guys say, "Let's let's play together. We want to come here and do this." Yeah. And when it comes to Riola's decision timeline, do you think that we'll know? where he's headed to school by the time summer starts? Do you think that he needs a couple more trips? I mean, do you think he'll even take it further than that and use his official visits? Yeah, that's the million-dollar question because there are very few quarterbacks that have the leverage he has. He right. does. He can do what he wants. He can set the timeline, um, and everybody is willing to wait. Um, so I think it's a matter of you know making the right decision you know, he did the Ohio State thing and decommitted. So I, I, they don't want to go through that again. I think they want to make sure that they know for sure this is where they want to go. And they've been very careful about laying out a public timeline. Uh, but there are visits that are going to run all the way through April. April, mm -hmm. What will the month of May look like? And even June. I mean, because it is, you're right. It, for a quarterback to go into May, deep into May, that's that's, that's pretty pretty rare right now. But he's one of the guys that can do it. Yeah, if you can do it, you know, you have the leverage. Go ahead and take your time. Um, what is Matt Rule's pitch? We know what he's pitching to Dylan Riola, uh, the QB, the franchise, come in, change the course of history and all that. You can do it from the quarterback position. But what about some of these other top recruits that are on campus, like a Brandon Baker who doesn't necessarily have those family ties to the university? Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like, look, just come check it out. And and I don't kid yourself, Riola's presence here has played an impact. He is friends with Brandon Baker. Um, they communicate. So some of those relationships, um, Dylan Riola carries a lot of weight. And when kids see he's coming here and he's like, why don't you just come too? Let's all check it out together. I think that has played a big factor. Uh, but it is such a diverse group of visitors from coast to coast, from 
Idaho to Connecticut um, to California to small town Nebraska to Kansas City to St. Louis to Texas. I mean, that that's what jumps out. It is a full plate of visitors. Several of these guys ranked number one in their prospective states. Yeah, Dylan and Dylan Raiola could majorly impact the course of this 2024 class for Nebraska if he jumps on early. And knowing where Nebraska is roster wise, this class needs all the help it can get. So, do you think it would benefit Dylan Raiola to to maybe commit early? And if he doesn't commit early, does that actually hurt Nebraska's chances? Yeah, great question. Because let's face it, the 2024 recruiting cycle. Um, by July 4th is done. I mean, there will be some guys left. Um, but what we've learned in about the month of June is your priority targets typically will come in the first weekend or two. The third and the fourth weekends of June, those are your plan B options. Um, so you don't really have a lot of time. This is the time. Like, you have to take advantage of March and April uh, because you want to go into May and June with a really good idea because there's just not a lot of quality activity that goes – on deep into the season anymore just the reality of the early signing day yeah and you can tell why nebraska fans are so intrigued by this because the timing of it all matters and when he makes this decision or not makes this decision is going to change the course of this recruiting class for the huskers all right sean you got about 24 hours before this weekend starts go take some some rest and relaxation and if you guys want to know anything about what's happening in lincoln nebraska huskers online has you covered all weekend thanks sean for coming on the inside scoop hey thanks a lot josh appreciate it thank you for watching make sure you smash that subscribe button for me and remember to check out all the videos on the on three youtube page